Morgan Spurrier from the documentary Supersize Me heard that McDonald's food was nutritious. Well, if it's true, he must be able to eat it every day. And so he did. A month later, three doctors and fatigue implored him to stop eating it because his liver was shutting down. In fact, it was killing him. Good afternoon, my name is Rini Learn, and today I will be showing you lovely and talented Katie Learn will be summing up our case. The motion today is straightforward. However, we need to understand what fast food is. Generally, fast food is already prepared and is traditionally fine or defined, and is often taken away. So, we are not talking about the pet lunch moment for us today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time we quit coming around with our food and start taking our diet seriously. So, who are we? According to the WHO, 1 billion of us are overweight and 300 billion are obese and obesity rates have doubled since the 1980s, including in China. And not surprisingly, so has fast food. Currently, McDonald's saving serves 65 million customers a day. That 65 million people being served food that will ultimately make them sick. And according to the FDA, the overeating of fast food more than two times a week leads to serious illnesses, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, heart and stroke diseases, and certain forms of cancers, such as breast and colon. In fact, 400,000 Americans died each year from these diseases, and, of this, and these fatalities are the second most preventable deaths next to smoking. Again, obesity is the second biggest cure in Americans next to smoking. The FDA also warns us that obesity rates in children have more than doubled since the 1980s. Perhaps one of the most sobering statements came from the former U.S. Surgeon General, Richard Carmona, and I quote, Because of the increasing rates of obesity, unhealthy eating habits and physical inactivity, we may see the third generation that will be less healthy and have a shorter life than their parents. And why are these people dying? Because, and again, according to the FDA, your average fast food meal contains almost all the calories you need for the whole day. It's overloaded with trans fatty acids, cholesterol as well as salt and sugar. Did you know you got to watch seven hours to burn off a Big Mac meal? And so why should we care? This is American's problem, right? Wrong. McDonald announced this year that Asia was the key to eat growth that it will basically increase the number of franchises in China. And sadly, Asia already has grown faster growing obesity rates as two-thirds of the world of diabetics according to the WHO. And all this for what? So corporate American can line their pockets with our money at the same time we line our artery, they are deadly cholesterol. Ladies and gentlemen, if we say that they have come for all of us to quit coming around with our food and start taking our diet seriously. Thank you. Brain in emotion. 
So, actually, what brings the harm? Now it's time to awaken and not to deceive yourselves. I want to ask several questions. Don't we have a choice to choose which restaurant to eat in? And don't we have a choice to choose healthier food in fast food restaurants? Can't we avoid uh, condiments that may add up the calorie level? In fact, fast food restaurants are just serving people's needs, with customers being the one who can make a choice. They are taking the active role by choosing to eat fast food. And so, actually, fast food restaurants are not at all responsible for the harm brought about, and instead, customers are at fault, especially when health information are actually provided, like the nutrition value and also what kind of content they contain. So we see that customers actually are willing to take in the food given that they know the health content. And actually, we can also enjoy healthy food in fast food restaurants. For example, we can have salad and also sweet coins and we can have normal meals like pasta and also rice and we can choose fruit juice instead of salt drinks and we can also avoid condiments like ketchup and mayonnaise as they are optional. Fast food restaurants is in fact not really bringing much harm as fast food can be not as unhealthy as we perceive. If we exercise a better control over fast food or also have a better lifestyle. A very good example would be the Chicago Marathon runner Joe D'Amico. He had McDonald's food for his every meal for a month before his marathon competition and in fact after the period he didn't have any weight gained and his marathon result was 41 seconds faster than his previous record. So this proves that fast food can have no effect on our health status, but different people have different needs on food. So the main point is that we have to get a balanced fast food lifestyle. And also, fast food restaurants are also help promote um, the healthy diets. For example, in Fairwood, there are zero monosodium glutamate dinner sets, and in Pizza Hut, thin and light pizzas are available. So people generally get to know more about food contents and also they pay more attention to nutrition value when they choose their food. And so to conclude, fast food restaurants is not responsible for the harm and also the convenience brought about is undeniable. And on the other hand, they also help promote healthier dinner healthier food also. And at last, I want all of you to think about why fast food restaurants still stand their way nowadays. There must be some good points and probably people think that good points um, or actually surpass the disadvantages. And so um, my teammates will further explain the case. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the negative team is getting it all wrong today. They say it's convenience, but ask the 400,000 Americans who died last year because of diets related to disease or the 1,500 Hong Kongers who died of colon cancer. Are the few minutes of convenience worth years of your life? They also say that it's, our book, it's about choice, but do children really have a choice? And anyway, shouldn't there be a warning labels on the food, like the ones we see on cigarettes? Then at least we can make an informed choice. Now, if I may, I'd like to return to our case. From the beginning, we have insistence that the time has come for us to quit clowning around with our food and start taking our diet seriously. But what also needs to be digested here today, ladies and gentlemen, is not just unhealthy food but the unhealthy moral practices of the fast food corporations. So, let's start with the rubbish, shall we? Did you know that McDonald's used to serve their food on reusable plates and cups? But they stopped. And can't you guess why? Of course you can. Money. By throwing away plates, 
calorie and cut steak and increase sales and reduce employees and thus increase profit. And how much waste does the fast food industry generate? According to the EPA, the average Americans will produce roughly 800 pounds of fast food garbage per year. And how much waste is this? In the U.S., it's enough waste to fill 500,000 football fields, six feet high in trash each year. What a stink! And talking about stink, how would you feel about a tobacco company pushing cigarettes on your children? Or alcohol being glamorized on a TV cartoon network? Well, I guess we don't have to tell you where this is going. McDonald's targets young, innocent children. Full stop. And why do they target children? Because they, like the FDA, know all too well that most children's eating habits are formed between the ages of 3 to 5. We can all remember the smell of grandma's apple pies or mom's turkey dinner, right? But it isn't just about the smell and the taste. McDonald's brainwashes children. Are you ready? In 2007, Stanford University showed that most children prefer food that came out of a McDonald's bag rather than just a normal one. But get this, the food was exactly the same. So, food that comes out of a McDonald's bag always tastes better. And how about the toys? Did you know that more toys are given away by Ronald McDonald than Toys R Us? So, if you can't get them hooked on the food, just make it Christmas every day. And speaking of Christmas, did you know more children recognize Ronald McDonald than Jesus Christ? Not only are the fast food restaurants serving food that is killing us, they also have more practices that would turn the stomach of even the most staunch capitalist. We say, Let's all quit clowning around with our food and stop taking our diets seriously. A famous Fortune 500 CEO once said, Look after the customer and the business will take care of itself. Sadly, McDonald's has strict from this principle. And oh, by the way, do you want to know who said that? Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's. Thank you. Gentlemen, good evening. According to the affirmative side first speaker, Rainey, she just said that McDonald's, such as fast food, has increased the obesity rates and as well as the illness diabetes in the world. However, we do not agree with it because actually, according to the latest report from the Food Safety Center, it is stated that actually many food available in the current market are also unhealthy. Let's start with the trans fat content. For example, a coconut bun and a croissant can have 10 times to 90, 19 times of the trans fat content of that of the McDonald's french fries. And for the saturated fat content, actually, a 93 gram of coconut bun with cream can have 1.1 gram of saturated fat more than that of McDonald's McNugget. And for the cholesterol, Actually, a 130 gram of French croissants can have 5 gram of cholesterol more than that of the chop chops, pop chops provided by the fairwood. So that it is unfair for us to blame the fast food for bringing unhealthy food and for causing obesity in the world. Actually, many food in the lovely society also unhealthy to our health. And secondly, I'm going to talk about the illness diability. As they say that the, the fast food restaurant have caused the illness diabetes. However, I want to say that this kind of diseases will, will happen if we don't do exercise. So if we don't do exercise, no wonder we have these diseases. So I think it is so mislead, misleading for us to tell that argument because it's not the only privilege of the fast food shops. However, we cannot deny that fast food restaurants really provide advantages to the lower days BC public. So firstly, fast food restaurants 
provide food which is really convenient to the general public. Living in such a fast-paced and busy city, eating fast is vital to our daily lives. According to the latest Robinson Telephone survey, it is found that Americans value convenience much more than their health. Among 42% of Americans eat fast food at least once a week, while 12% eat only two to three times a week. Among those who eat fast food, about half of them do so because of its convenience instead of its taste. So that when we eat in a fast food restaurant, we just need to wait for 5 to 10 minutes to get our food and then spend another minutes to finish the whole set of meal. When compared with other normal restaurants, it is really much more convenient for us to eat in a fast food restaurant. So undeniably, some of the fast food shops like McDonald's may known to be known for providing some of the unhealthy food, such as french fries. However, it is not fresh news. If people have already known that fast food restaurants may not be a healthy and those homemade food, and they still eat them so often, can't we deduce that those people have already forgotten their health for convenience? Secondly, it is the market demand that drives the supply. Foreseeing the trends of the prior preference, many fast food restaurants emerge one by one eventually. In recent decades, there are more and more Chinese restaurants start fast food chains. And, it, and now fast food is not only the delicacy of the Western countries. Actually, many Chinese restaurants do, do start fast food chains such as Messim, Cafe de Coro, and Fairwood. And many Hong Kong people do have lunch in this eatery, and their market shares are so large that some of them can even go listed. So that it is only the demand that brings the supply, and it is unfair for us to blame for the supply only, because only the supply, only with the supply and with the demand is constant. And thank you. Good afternoon. Today our debate on fast food and the restaurant that serve it is drawing to a close. Our job today was simple. We had to decide whether or not fast food restaurants were causing more harm than good. And if, you were, and if you were only to look at the fact that the food was seriously damaging our health, you would have to agree with the motion. However, we looked beyond this and went on to say that the companies that sell it are morally deficient. But before I summarize our case, let me address a few spurious comments made by the Lanty team. Their first speaker said that McDonald's sells salads and corn, uh, sweet coins and some healthy food. Maybe they do, but you can't find it on their main board. You, you have to ask for the menu, so they're obviously not serious about selling healthy food. Um, anyway, a McDonald's salad has, uh, has, between, has between two to 600 calories in it. Their first speaker and their second speaker said that fast food restaurants include restaurants like Fairwoods and Cafe de Ground. If you say Cafe de Caron uh, or Fairwood in New York, no one will know what you are talking about. And the whole world knows McDonald's. And McDonald's account for 43% of the whole fast food industry. They say it isn't bad for you. Who are you going to believe? The former U.S. Surgeon General, the FDA, head, um, head of the WHO, Margaret Chan, or the negative team? Now, if I may, I'd like to summarize our case. From the beginning, we've urged you all today that we need to stop clowning around with our food and, uh, and start taking our diet seriously. Our first speaker focused primarily on just how unhealthy the food was. She clearly defined the motion and stated that if we didn't talk about McDonald's, then we'd be missing the point of this debate today. She told us that a billion of us are overweight, are overweight and the 300 million are obese, and obesity rates since the 1980s has doubled, and the number of McDonald's restaurants have tripled. We went from 10,000 restaurants in the 80s to over 30,000 today, and even they claim to feed 65 million people a day. 65 million people being fed food that will ultimately make them sick. And what kind of sicknesses? According to the FDA, they included diabetes, heart and stroke disease, as well as cancers such as colon and breast. In fact, these illnesses are killing 400,000 Americans per year, the second most preventable death next to smoking. 
And speaking of death, former U.S. Surgeon General Richard Kimona gave us all a stark warning. Today's children will be less healthy as well as have shorter lives than their parents. She went on to explain that the average McNeil had tremendous amounts of trans fatty acids, copious amounts of cholesterol, scads of sodium and sugar. In fact, there are so many calories that the average person has to walk about seven hours to work it off. And this wasn't just America's problem, as McDonald's announced this spring that they would, they would be aggressively expanding in China. Our second speaker, Mandy Chow, said that fast food restaurants do more harm than good because they were morally deficient. Fast food, restaurant, fast food companies deliberately create more rubbish for profit. They are also devoid of moral character because they aggressively target innocent children. They brainwash children through advertising and giving out toys. Stanford University research showed that children prefer food that came out of a McDonald's bag than a plain one. Heck, children even recognized Ronald McDonald before Jesus Christ. She then reminded us that the time had come for us all to quit clowning around with our food and to start taking the food we eat seriously. Ray Kwok once said, look after the customer and the business will take care of itself. And sadly, they are no longer doing this. Thank you. Adjudicator, Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Being the negative side, we totally disagree with today's motion. That is, we believe that fast food restaurants didn't bring much harm than good. Actually, fast food restaurants exist due to people's preference, the convenience it brought, and the importance of demand and supply. Therefore, we think that fast food restaurants are not responsible for bringing the harm. First, I would like to draw your attention to arguments made by the affirmative side. When the negative side mentions about the convenience brought by the fast food restaurants, the negative side argues that people eat fast food restaurants and they die early as a result. But is it comparable? I bet not. Also, they said that um, there's children's that children have no choice to make the judgment but, however, um, do their parents have a choice? I'm certain that their parents will make the best judgment for them. The, negative, the affirmative side has mentioned about EPA's result, which um, they said that they claim that uh, fast restaurants gener generate plastic waste due to instant bowls and cups. However, uh, the restaurants other than the fast food restaurants provide plastic utensils. Do fast food restaurants solely provide environmental and friendly utensils? I bet not. Indeed, Fairwood and Messams use renewable cups and dishes which is um, beneficial to the environment. Another point is that fast food restaurants like McDonald's have contributed to the environmental industry indeed. So we didn't, we shouldn't uh, put the blame to the fast food restaurant due to their 